Hey guys, Yvonne Blasquez here. So um, this video is inspired by my last video that I did on oxalates and at the end of this video I hit on nutrient deprivation and how it could be a stimulus for autophagy. So um, this is courtesy of Dr. Rhonda Patrick and I'm going to go ahead and put her card for autophagy video. I'm going to try and really make this as simple as possible because to be quite honest with you, I mean this is way over my head um, and that's the truth. But with that being said, I have done a lot of research on it and I'm just kind of going to do my best to explain it all. Um, so what we have here is nutrient deprivation, okay? So that's basically when calories are reduced and so forth, right? And this also ties into my whole concept of calories in versus out is I think it's completely obsolete and outdated. That's a dinosaur way of understanding weight loss and health. I believe that we don't have to count calories if we make our calories count. and so. Uh, when it comes to nu nutrient deprivation and this whole idea with the plant paradox and how lectins and phytates kind of are anti-nutrients, right? Well, they're anti-nutrients because they also kind of promote nutrient deprivation, if you will, because they reduce bioavailability of minerals and even calories, actually, because fiber is an anti-nutrient, right? That's not all that bad of a thing, quite frankly, because as I mentioned, our society, we overeat. A lot of people are overweight and obese, right? Well instead of cutting calories we can change our calories and those calories when they when they enter our body will cut calories for us and that's the science of um, anti-nutrients quite frankly um, so we have nutrient deprivation which leads to an increase of protein deacetylation which is basically a decrease in, in uh, cytosolic acetyl coenzyme a now that's interesting because what does acetyl coenzyme a have to do with anything well in the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, acetylcoenzyme A is what's kind of like the gateway to enter energy metabolism to produce ATP, which is energy currency. And so obviously when we have lower levels of acetylcoenzyme A, that's going to be less uh, available, I guess, energy, uh, at a less efficient energy, energy production um, or not producing as much energy, right? Well, that's obvious because obviously if, you're take, if there's less calories coming in, then there's going to be less... Um, you know, available, I guess, ATP currency, if you will, energy currency to run this cycle effectively. Now, a little sidebar. Ketogenic diets are based on this uh, aspect where one of the intermediates that interacts with um, acetylcoenzyme A is depleted, and so you have an accumulation of acetylcoenzyme A, and it doesn't enter the, uh, the Krebs cycle, and it ends, actually ends up an alternate pathway which is the whole concept of ketone bodies being used as a source of energy since you don't have some of the prerequisites I believe it's called the intermediate is oxaloacetate okay so when those when that d d decreases acetylcoenzyme A is incapable uh, to enter the uh, citric acid cycle for normal or normal energy metabolism and so you have the whole gluconeogenic uh, pathways and ketosis and all that right again that's over so autophagy and all this is all connected so let's just go ahead and move on so obviously this is all catabolic okay so you have reduced energy supply and you have these reactions going on right so the body's gonna have to start breaking down its own energy right to kind of produce energy stored energy which is a catabolic function then you have decreased levels of mTOR I think of mTOR as being this building up anabolic you know su substance so you decrease this right which is gonna decrease IGF-1 and then you increase this AMP kinase. Now, when I think of AMP kinase, AMP, I think of it as being a fat-burning, um, you know, uh, pathway or fat-burning kind of a reaction here. And so this leads to autophagy, okay? So in a sense, guys, autophagy is a catabolic function, but autophagy is really kind of, it's very complicated. There are cases where, and the, the way I like to think of it is too much autophagy is probably not a good thing too little autophagy is not a good is not a good thing so when we say too much autophagy it's probably like starvation like someone who hasn't eaten in like weeks and months that's too much autophagy now again you can modulate that uh, or you can control that in, in a kind of a controlled setting but if you have someone who's like stranded out in a desert their body's gonna fight to survive right autophagy but guess what we can only go so long without food eventually we'll die and that's too much autophagy <laughs> obviously now, in regards to autophagy being too little, that's in those who overeat, overeat, overly anabolic, higher levels of mTOR, obese, overweight, you know, too much eating, and it's too little autophagy. So autophagy, it's about a fine line. It's about a fine line of autophagy, and it's still complicated, and we still don't have all the answers. But what I wanted to mention was a lot of the anti-nutrients 
create nutrient deprivation when they enter our body. I refer to this as the metabolic fate of calories. In other words, the calories that enter our body are not the same that you read on a label. In fact, there's a study at the bottom of this video where I explain that, um, or the study explains that there's a 50, I think it's like a 50% difference in the, um, in the thermic effect of a meal when it's a processed meal versus unprocessed. And the way I, I've said it before in that, if the meal is processed, like processed foods, our body doesn't have to work to really do much to process the food since it's already processed. It just, you know, just enters our body and just easy, you know what I mean? From the lips to the hips. Whereas when the food is unprocessed, right, like a whole plant-based food that is full of fiber and it's unprocessed, your body has to process it and that expends energy. In which case, the, new, the calories on the label are not going to reflect uh, the, uh, the, the actual end product of those calories and how they end up in your body. It's so much deeper and so much further than what we know and think. But I just wanted to make this video to kind of illustrate this, uh, this concept of the anti-nutrients actually being favorable and that they actually can induce autophagy through nutrient deprivation. So with that, guys, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Uh, check out the two videos that I'm linking here with my video on uh, oxalates as well as Dr. Rhonda Patrick's video on autophagy. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time.